The price for your glory is their suffering. Hello? Is anybody here? Do you know what's going on? Nobody else is awake. It's my duty to take care of you. I owe a responsibility to you. I ain't got to like you. We're putting a human on top of a missile, shooting him into space, and it's never been done before. <laughs> well... While Disney's animated adventure Moana rules supreme at the box office, it seems Hollywood is taking a break to prepare for the onslaught slot ahead. You saw a bit of it there. In the next few weeks and just in time for the season, movie fans will be gifted with a bounty of blockbusters and possible Oscar contenders. So today, Eli has a treat for us, a preview of all that is to come. Wow, I can't imagine. Just all those movies coming. Uh, coming. They've been waiting. Yeah, they've been, we've been waiting. And I want to begin here with the blockbusters because a couple of titles there I'm keeping a close eye on. Doesn't get any bigger than this first film I'm going to talk about, but I need to take you to some time, a long time ago, in a galaxy far, <laughs> far away. And yet somewhat familiar. This is a film about the power of the prequel. Take a look. The power that we are dealing with here is immeasurable. If the Empire has this kind of power, what chance do we have? We have hope. Oh, Lordy, I hope it's good. From the director of Godzilla, the star of Theory of Everything, there she is, the screenwriter of About a Boy and many others. It is Rogue One featuring Felicity Jones, the concept brilliant, a heist film set before A New Hope, explaining how the rebels got their hands on the Death Star plans. Am I excited? Is a Wookiee Harry? Of course I am, <laughs> but it's a cautious enthusiasm because there were reports of reshoots, and the appeal to me of this film is that it was darker. It was returned to some of the more serious, better moments in Star Wars, a la Empire Strikes Back. So hopefully, Michael, those reshoots weren't watering down that darkness mm -hmm. and uh, adding a little bit of sweetness and light. If it's sweetness and light you want, let's take a look at Passengers with, wow, what star power. Two very beautiful people on a beautiful spaceship, Jennifer Lawrence and Chris <laughs> Pratt, as two people who wake up early on this extended space voyage. Not sure about the tone of this one. Comedic, adventure, mysterious. But I think the big question is chemistry. Pratt and Lawrence, two of the biggest stars going. But will they click? Will they actually work with each other? We'll see. Uh, I, I don't even know what this movie is about, but I saw the preview and I went, ooh, I want to see that ooh. movie. So, so we'll see. But of course, the holidays are also the time when we start talking about potential Oscar contenders. Are we hearing any early buzz here? Oh, for sure. And you know, what's interesting is this year seems to be an answer to that issue we had a couple years ago of the, the hashtag Oscar so black, that lack of diversity. And this year, we're now seeing this wonderful explosion of African-American stories. I already talked about the movie Moonlight, but now we have other movies such as Fences. Now, this is a movie based on a play that Denzel Washington starred in. He is now actually directing this and starring Viola Davis there, playing his wife. This is a film making a lot of waves already, earning some nominations. And then another movie, this is a tale about space and race set in the 1960s. And like the movie The Help, Hidden Figures is kind of a feel-good film about racism. A nice trick if you can pull it off. It's set in NASA, the true story of black women who literally worked as computers. They were almost segregated, and they're called computers because they computed. They added the numbers for the trajectories of those rockets as America was trying to catch up with the Ruskies. So you've got Taraji P. Henson, you've got Janelle Monet, you've got Kevin Costner, uh, Octavia uh, Spencer, you saw her there. You'll be hearing a lot about uh, this one. Okay, that looks good. A lot, a lot there that I'm putting on my list so far. Right. But if you were to choose one movie, what is the one movie you can't wait to see? All right, so this is a film from one of our masters. It is a director exploring his faith with a tale set in the 1600s. Take a look. Ferreira is lost to us. He denounced God in public and surrendered the faith. That's not possible. Father Ferreira risked his life to spread our faith all over Japan. It seems to me that our mission here is more urgent than ever. We must go find Father Ferreira. 
That is a slice of silence as directed by Martin Scorsese. You've got Andrew Garfield, Adam Driver, and it looks like Marty has made his apocalypse now because it is about those two priests going into the wilderness of Japan trying to rescue their colleague. Now, when you think Martin Scorsese, you think of the crime films, you think Goodfellas and all that, mm -hmm. but he was and still is an altar boy, and he has always kind of wrestled with his faith. And he started working on this movie essentially after The Last Temptation of Christ. It is a passion project, and I cannot wait to see what he does with it.